Hey everybody, Joy here. It is Tuesday and it is February 15, 2022. So how was your happy Valentine's Day? Yes, I missed a devotion yesterday and Jerry missed Sunday School Sunday. We were out of town actually. We had to go back to Louisville and um, we just didn't have the ability. We had people coming to the RV to look at it and um, people around it and, and got there late. Anyway, it was just not a good time to make videos, okay? <laughs> yesterday and today. And yesterday was Valentine's Day. And so on our way home from Louisville, uh, I asked Jerry if I could stop at a fabric store. And, of course, he didn't mind it right on the way home. So that was my Valentine's. It was very nice quiet, mostly in the car driving, and we were in phone conversations about our two commercial buildings, which I don't know how on earth is even possible <laughs> because we sold the one here first, and then we sold the one there second, and it was weeks apart from each other, but we're closing on both of them this Friday. How is that even possible? <laughs> but praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> Okay, today I'm going to read from the Bible, 2 Timothy, the first chapter, starting at verse 6, because there is a verse in here that jumped off the page to me, because you've probably heard me talk about how young people these days scare me. They, they just look like they want to hurt you and they're, they're angry. And I'm not talking about all young people. I'm talking about young people who are in gangs, young people who um, are probably from homes with no daddy. Um, I don't know. I don't even know what the details are other than they're covered with tattoos and they've got all these things hanging from their face. One girl had three rings in her nose. That just scares me, probably because of my age, probably because of the way I grew up. It just scares me, and it just looks like they're screaming rebellion to me. And you know, the tattoos all up and down their arms, and they're not pretty little flowers usually. They're scary things. And so scary things scare me and young people. I'm afraid. You know, I can talk to the camera, and I can say anything I want to that camera. And if you're on the other side watching me and you don't like me, you can just turn me off and never watch me again. Well, if I come up to a real live person <laughs> someplace or several of these people and they've got some horrible music on and, um, you know, sometimes these people drive by and their car gets next to you at a light or at a stop sign and their music is so loud it shakes your car. This is wrong to me. It's just wrong to me. It's rebellious. It's, it blocks your mind. It blocks your connection between you and the Lord. And I just think it's so, so unnerving, so disheartening. It's like people don't want to talk to people anymore. Young people especially, and older people too, um, not so much my age, the, you know, the granny grannies who don't even hardly know how the cell phone works, but younger people, they're just all the time, all the time, all the time. And, um, you'll see them, a family at a table in a restaurant, the mom, the dad, three kids, some of them maybe three, four years old, and all of them at the table or playing their little video games or whatever. And I think it's just the saddest, saddest thing. I really do. I think all of that should be left in the car and these people should be talking to each other. It's like young people today don't know how to have a conversation and they don't really understand what you're saying and if you start to talk to them about the Lord, it's like, boy, you're some crazy old lady. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I know it has a lot to do with my age. Yes, I know that. <laughs> but yesterday, I ran into a store, I won't even say which one, but I ran into a store and there was a young person like this working at the cash register. Tattoos up and down both arms and the black ring coming out the nose. And she was young. She was probably, I don't know, 20 at the most. And um, I walked up to check out and I was like, oh no, she's not going to like me. Uh. But we started talking 
We started talking because I had my usual sinus issue. And I was telling her, I said, oh, I just, I don't have a cold. I'm not sick. It's just allergies. She said, I totally understand what you're talking about. She said, listen to me. And she started sniffing. I could tell she was all totally congested with this ring in her nose. Oh my gosh, how do you blow your nose with that there? But uh, she was telling me that all the people she worked with thought she was sick and had COVID and needed to go home. And she was saying, no, 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 it's just allergies. And I've taken this pill and I've taken this pill. So right away, we connected over that, over that. <laughs> and so then my credit card wouldn't work. <sighs> We use that credit card all the time, and so we buy everything with that credit card because then you know you get a list of everything you bought the whole year long. And um, the credit card wouldn't work. And took it out, tried it again, took it out, tried it again. So I think the Lord caused that to happen because we just stood there and we talked for probably 15 minutes. And we didn't talk about the Lord, <laughs> but uh asked her about her daughter there was this little girl running around in there and she was telling her to behave or go outside or do something and i said oh is that your daughter and she said yeah she was sick today and she had to go to the doctor and so we just talked easily you understand what i'm trying to say it's like she was one of these people that usually scare me and when i say scare me i mean make me feel like i can't be myself with them Okay, I feel uncomfortable around them because I, I know right away they're going to think I'm crazy. You know, most of my family thinks I'm a crazy goof. So anyway, <laughs> um, it was just so cheerful to me and happy to me that I could easily carry on a conversation with this girl. I mean, I could have invited her to my house for, for lunch and bring your little girl with you. And, and so I was just really thankful for that. I just thought, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. These people are just people just like everybody else. And, of course, she couldn't be on her cell phone because she was behind the cash register and had to wait on people. So, no cell phone blocking our communication. Boy, howdy, if that isn't the devil's number one tool to block communication, to break up communication in families. Unbelievable that in this day and age, every single person in every single nation has a little bitty screen in front of them that soaks up their attention and they just stare at it for hours just shocking to me. Does that mean you shouldn't have one? Of course not. Does that mean you shouldn't look at it? Of course not. <laughs> I'm sure many, many people have a cell phone, have a computer, and they still talk to their family, cook for their family, play with their family, go places with their family, especially the older generation. You don't see it so much there, but the young people, oh, I just see it constantly. I think it's so sad. Well, are you ever going to read the Bible, Joy? I am. And you'll say, I wonder what's in the Bible that she's talking about this for. <laughs> well, you'll see. All right, 2 Timothy. And do you like my new podium? You can't even see it, but I have a new white podium because Pastor Jerry wants to be downstairs to do Sunday school on Sunday, and he took my brown podium. <laughs> so, all righty. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Beginning at verse 6 and continuing. And I'm going to start in the Living Bible. So this is Paul. Paul is in prison. He's in prison for preaching about Christ. But somehow he's able to write to people, write letters to people. So he has written a letter to Timothy. He calls him his son. He's somebody he's very close to and really cares about. It's not really his son. So this is part of the letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. This being so, I want to remind you to stir into flame the strength and boldness that is in you, that entered into you when I, Paul, laid my hands upon your head and blessed you. For the Holy Spirit, God's gift, does not want you to be afraid of people. Does not want you to be afraid of people. That just jumped off the page to me. But to be wise and strong and to love them and enjoy being with them. Now that, verse 7 right there, they really changed that from the original King James. In fact, I didn't even realize it was the same scripture, but you will. The original King James says, 
For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Some of the versions say self-discipline, and I think that's very good. Instead of sound mind, it says self-discipline. Oh, my goodness, how does everybody need that? Okay, so it says it a little differently here in the Living Version. It says, For the Holy Spirit, God's gift, does not want you to be afraid of people, but to be wise and strong and to love them and enjoy being with them. If you will stir up this inner power, you will never be afraid to tell others about our Lord or to let them know that I am your friend, even though I am here in jail for Christ's sake. You will be ready to suffer with me for the Lord, for he will give you strength in suffering. It is he who saved us and chose us for his holy work. Not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan long before the world began. To show his love and kindness to us through Christ. And now he has made all of this plain to us by the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who broke the power of death and showed us the way of everlasting life through trusting him. And God has chosen me, Paul, to be his missionary, to preach to the Gentiles and teach them. That is why I am suffering here in jail, and I am certainly not ashamed of it. For I know the one in whom I trust, and I am sure that he is able to safely guard all that I have given him until the day of his return. The day of his return. That's what we all live for now, isn't it? The day of his return. The day that he takes us all up in what we call the rapture. The word rapture isn't in the Bible, but neither is the word pews. And the church has pews in it, but pews isn't in the Bible, so I don't understand the religion that's decided since the word music or instruments or something isn't in the New Testament, they should jerk them all out of the church. I don't get that. Why don't they jerk all the pews out, the chairs out, and all other things that aren't in the Bible? <laughs> Choir robes. I don't know. Some, some doctrines just... It's too much doctrine and not enough Jesus, in my opinion. Okay, dear ones. That's the scripture that I was into this morning, and I wanted to read that to you. So that was 2 Timothy 1, verses 6, ending at verse 12. And you can read that whole letter there. It's uh, very nice and talking about all the different people that Paul has known and the things that happened with them. So don't be afraid. When somebody attacks you or badmouths you, for loving Jesus, for talking about Jesus, for reading the Bible. It's happened to me. It's happened to me many times in my life. I used to work with this woman, and she was not a Christian at all. And um, she would not come into my office. We were offices next to each other. Her office was next to my office. And she used to come to my office, and she'd stand outside the door to talk to me. And I'd say, come in here, Mary. Come in here and sit down and talk to me. And she'd say, no, 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 no. She said, it's like a blankety-blank Christian science reading room in there. And it was far from Christian science, but <laughs> she saw my Bibles and my books and my tapes, and she wanted to be sure none of my Jesus cooties rubbed off on her. <laughs> I've prayed for her for years and years and years and, and pray that she gets saved before she passes on to this next world. I'm hoping to finish that kitty cat quilt today I've been talking about for a while. It's on my other channel if you want to know more about it. My other channel is just called Joy Bernhardt, and my name's B-E-R-N-H-A-R-D-T. Just think of heartburn and turn it around, but don't spell it like heartburn, okay? <laughs> All right, dear ones, I'll be back tomorrow. Bye for now.